Hello, and what we're going to talk about today is relation versus function. A relation is just a correspondence between two sets. So let's take a look at some random set. I'm going to make this one up. We have blue. We have green. We have red on one side. On the other side, we have Bob. We have Sam. We have Jill. And we'll say Sue. So what we're going to do is we're going to match up the colors with the names. So blue might go with Bob. Green might go with Sue. Red might match up with Jill. And green might match up with Sam. So right now, what we have is a relationship. We know that Bob and Blue go together, green goes with Sam and Sue, and red go with Jill. This is just a correspondence. It's also called a mapping from one thing to the other. So the way I drew my arrows, that the colors will be my input. And the names will be the output. That's what a relation is, just matching stuff up. Now, what a function is, uh, a function is a special relation. It's where each x, which we also call the input, the domain, or the independent. So when we talk about x, we're talking about input, we're talking about domain, we're talking about the independent variable, is matched up to, or we call it mapped, to one and only one y. And that's really important. It can only go to one and only one y. We also call the y the output. We also call it the range. We call it the, the dependent variable. And once we know it's a function, we note it as f of x. That's what this down here reads as here. Right here, this reads f of x. And when we see that notation, we know it's a function, which means we know it's a relation. And for every x, there's only one y matched to it. So let's take a look back at our relation up here. If we consider our colors to be our inputs, or our x, if we consider the names to be the output, or our y's, this is not a function. And the reason this is not a function see if I can do that a little bit better. Function is because right here we have green that goes to Sam and it also goes to Sue. So we have one X that goes to two different Y's. Now the way that we read this is that a relation for it to be a function. It's a relation, which is good, but it can be matched, each x can be matched to one and only one y, and so we fail right there. That's an easy one. Let's take a look at a list of ordered pairs. Two, three, one, seven, Six three, it's our first one. And if we take a look at this, what we've got to look is first of all look at your x's. If your x's are not repeated in the list as ordered pairs, you have a function. If an x is repeated in your list of ordered pairs, you do not have a function because that means that x has been mapped to not one y but two y's. So this here is a function. This is yes. Let's take a look at another one. We'll do x and 3. We'll do 5 and 2. We'll do negative 3 and 2, 
And lastly, we'll do 5 and negative 7. Now, as I take a look at this, this is not a function. It does not matter that the y's are done twice. Who cares? What does matter is I'm looking through this list. I have x, no other x's. I have 5 here, but I have 5 also right there. That means this is not a function. Okay, so that's easy. We can look at the ordered pairs and determine if it's a function. Easy peasy. How else are we going to look to see if it's a function? Well, another way we can look to see it's a function is to look at the graph. So let's just draw a quick little graph here. Whoa, that's awesome. Okay, so here's my graph. For it to be a function, it must pass the vertical line test. What the vertical line test is, it says I have to be able to drop a vertical line anywhere along my graph, and if it touches it once and only once, everywhere or anywhere on the graph, then I have a function. If it touches it more than once, I do not have a function. So let's drop a vertical line right here. I'll just drop it right here. Oh, passes right there. But if I drop it right there, it fails. So this particular function, or this particular graph, is not a function. Let's take a look at another one. Let's get rid of my vertical lines. Let's take a look at this one. Nice parabolic shape. Is this a function? Well, let's drop a vertical line. I'll drop it right here. Oh, once, once. Once, once, yeah, hey, parabolic shapes are functions as long as they open up or open down. So let's take a look at a parabolic shape that is not a function. Get rid of my vertical lines again. There we go. Here's a parabolic shape on its side. Let's drop a vertical line. If we drop it right here at the vertex, it touches it once and only once. But if I drop it anywhere else, it fails. So this one is not a function. So, if you've got a list, can you determine if it's a function? Any x that's repeated or any input that's repeated? Not a function. If you have a graph, Drop a vertical line. You can tell if it's a function or not. But what happens if you're given an equation and you're trying to determine whether or not it's a function? Well, let's take a look at one. I have 3x plus 7 is equal to 6y plus 2x. So if you have an equation, the way in which you determine whether or not it's a function is by solving for y. If you solve for y and y equals, and it's not y equals plus or minus, then you have a function. So let's take a look and see if we can solve this for y. So we need to get that 2x to the other side. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides so we get x plus 7 is equal to 6y. Remember, I'm trying to solve for y. And when I do this, I'm going to divide by 6, and so I have x plus 7 divided by 6 is equal to y. And it doesn't matter what x I put in there, I can get one and only one y. So let's take a look at another one. We have x plus 3y squared plus 6x is equal to 12. Again, we want to solve for y. So, let's go ahead and have 3y squared 
Let's add our x's up and bring them to the other side, so we get 12. 1 plus 6 is 7x. Take to the other side, so it's minus 7x. Divide by 3, so we get y squared is equal to, that wasn't a very nice equal, so let's try that one again. Is equal to 12 minus 7x divided by 3. Now I've got y squared, not y. So the way in which I get y by itself is I have to undo this squared, and the way I do it is take the square root of both sides. So I've got y is equal to plus and minus the square root of 12 minus 7x divided by 3. Now, if I were to put 0 in for x, I'm going to get 12 divided by 3, which is 4, but I have this plus and minus sitting right out here. So if I put just one number, which is 0, in there, I'm going to get a positive and a negative answer. I'm going to get two answers. So this is not a function. So here's the rule of thumb. If y is squared, if it was y is to the fourth power, if y is to the sixth power, if y, if you have a term in there where y is squared, y to the fourth, y to the sixth, y to any even powered, it is not a function.